Oh, dude, I swear, like, the last couple episodes, we keep starting without, uh... Oh, without having the screen set up. Welcome, guys. Welcome back to some more Higurashi. Was last episode the choking, I think? No, it was, like, recovery into... Or maybe we got choked out then. Because right now we're looking at the hospital Rena goes to, right? And we met with uh, Natsumi, and we're having a conversation. I was trying to say wholesome, but it kind of took a darker turn asking about uh it's, it's hard to go through but it's like assimilating with your new uh living area sort of thing so yeah let's just get right into this good to see natsumi again and again, I think I mentioned last episode, but I really didn't, like, put together... Wait, no, shit. I actually don't have a point. Sorry. <laughs> I had a point, but then I forgot it halfway, so I'm just not gonna say it. Just in case it's wrong. But if if I said something that that's a point in the last episode, then you'll probably know what it is. <laughs> Natsumi quickly began to look surprised as she heard that. Tomoe tried to make it, her feel at ease by smiling and telling her an old story of her own. <laughs> Oh, I was, I just remember the point, I was, uh, how Tomoe's, uh, back, background's kind of similar to Satoko's. I was gonna say to Natsumi, but when I thought about, like, wait, that does, it's not exactly the same. But it's actually really close to Satoko's, which is interesting. それに東京だと当たり前に手に入るようなものがそこでは買いに行くだけでも一苦労。なんか一人だけ置き去りになった気分になっちゃったな。置き去りになった。おまけに祖母がぎっくり腰になったおかげで畑で農作業を手伝う
taste a bit different than ones you buy at grocery stores sometimes. Despite such a minor difference, Tomoe was surprised by the result. その時も感じたの。違っていることは別に悪いことばかりじゃない。なのに私は周りに合わせなきゃって思いすぎて気を使いすぎて勝手に苦手意識を持ってしまっていた。そして違っていることを変外して違いを楽しもうとしなかった。
when you're trying to get someone to change your mindset, you're just saying, just do it. Obviously, it's harder than it sounds, but just, you know, practice doing it for basic stuff. I feel like it could definitely make a change. Vibing with Chisato and Tomato yet? Natsumi violently shook her head in response to that question. There's no reason to say she wasn't having fun. Walking around town together while shopping and chatting, while eating fast food were always new and interesting experiences. Yeah, Chisato appearance based. Probably won't see her after this in this arc. Or maybe ever, honestly. I'm, I'm still surprised we're getting so much nap to me in this arc. There was a girl with braids who always raised the mood with her over-the-top antics. When Natsumi was sitting alone in class and feeling left out, she called out to her from the other end of the room to look after her. And standing next to her were the, was the straight man in their comedy duo, a kind-hearted girl like a caring older sister. She often let Natsumi her notes when she couldn't keep up in her studies. Yeah, and then a quiet but gen gentle boy who drew lovely pictures that she marries in some good futures, some good fragments. Thinking about it, she was thankful to have such a happy environment. However, that gratitude turned apologetic. Every time she thought about it, she felt pathetic about how powerless she was. Compared to those kind-hearted friends, she felt dazed, jealous, sometimes even envious. It was getting harder and harder to tell them the truth. でも私それがなんだかみんなに悪いかなってだってみんな私のためにいろいろと優しくしてくれるのに何もできないから夏美さん友井 could feel she really was a kind-hearted girl she had been listening to Natsumi's story this whole time, but Natsumi never said anything bad about her friends or her parents. Surely there was someone she could blame for her guilty feelings. With things as they were, this girl was continuing to build up stress. And pain and suffering, that could very well explode one day if she reaches her limits. Tomoe had seen many cases of an earnest child falling into delinquency out of desperation, and she was worried about that. So... ねえ、夏美さん。友達って自分に何をしてくれるかって打算でなるものなのえ友達と楽しい話をしたり、遊んだりする。何かで困っていたら手を差し伸べる。その時に見返りを期待することってあるのかしら いえ、そんなことは。そうよね。そんなことを考えたりしないでしょ。自分がそうしたいからそうしているだけよね。はい。だったら別に相手の行為はありがたく受け取っておけばいいんじゃないかしら。それに。申し訳ないって遠慮されるよりありがとうって言って喜んでくれた方がきっと友達も嬉しいと思う迷惑をかけ合えるのは友達の特権なんだしね迷惑をかけることがですかなつみ's eyes went wide when she heard something she had never considered before they were her friends, so naturally she wanted to do something good for them. But the opposite of that was privilege? 
だって知らない人に迷惑をかけるなんて絶対にできないでしょふざけて相手を叩いたりわざとひどいことを言ってみたり普通だったら怒られても当然のことが友達にはできるだってそれは相手のことが大好きだってことの裏返しなんだからそれなんとなくだけどわかりますでも友達もそう思ってくれるんでしょうかそうよでなきゃ友達になろうって思ったりしないわむしろ申し訳ないって感じすぎて無理してでも答えなきゃって気を張り詰めてもいいことなんてないでないと今度は友達でいなきゃって考えるようになってあなたも友達も一緒にいることが辛くなっちゃうわよWhen Tomoe said that, Natsumi suddenly gasped. Is that it? The source of her pain was that she was in a panic, feeling she had to do something to, for her kind friends. So if she didn't panic, surely it wouldn't be painful. If she sh could just get back to her usual pace and interact with them like normal. Oh, but... Huh? Really? それで大丈夫なんでしょうか普段通りの私でいて千里ちゃんたまこちゃんあ私の友達の名前なんですがみんなは、yes. 仲良くしてくれるでしょうか yeah, please. It will be blessed, bro. That's me not pretending to be like I don't know, uptight and stuff. That'd be sick. So, yeah. I'd love to see that. 私は彼女たちがどんな子か知らないからいっぱいだけど本当のあなたを知らないうちからその子たちは仲良くしようって来てくれたんでしょそれって多分一方的にあなたにこっちへ来いってことじゃないと思うその子たちはきっとあなたが重すぎる荷物を背負っているように見えたんじゃないかなだから手伝ってあげようかってつもりで声をかけてくれたそう思わないあっ。Natsumi recalled when she first met the two of them. Chisato said, We're friends, so don't hold back. Tomato said, Feel free to speak up if anything is bothering you. But she was the one holding back. She was the one who couldn't speak up. The two of them always left the door open for her. あなたが言うような優しい子たちなら大丈夫よ彼女たちと仲良くなりたいって思う気持ち話せば分かってくれると思うわだから思い切って相談してみたらこれから私も頑張るから今は手伝ってほしいってそれでもまだ申し訳ないって感じるなら語を付け加えたらどうかしら私もみんなのためにできる限りのことをするからってね。トモエさん。It was strange. Even though she had only just met Tomoe, her words penetrated deep into her heart. Her parents and teachers had probably said similar things in the past, but as far as Natsumi was concerned, they spoke coldly, like they were discussing someone else's business. But strangely, she felt that this woman was different. There was no way to be certain, but for some reason, she believed in her. I'll give it a try. Natsumi swore that in her heart as she lifted her head. Even though she thought it was it strange how the weight on her shoulders felt lighter and her heart felt at ease. Let's go. Proud of my girl. She got this. 
<laughs> this is what a good role model does for people, man. <laughs> As she said that, something seemed to death through to Natsumi, and she responded with a radiant smile. The gloomy atmosphere up until this point had completely vanished. Just then, a voice from the pharmacy counter called out, Number 33, Natsumi Kimiyoshi-san. Good talk, good talk. ごめんね。好き勝手に喋って時間もらっちゃって。いえ、そんなことないです。あの、またお話に聞いてもらってもいいですかええ、もちろん。だって私たち友達でしょ Natsumi nodded with a pleasant smile on her face. Ooh. Message you online? Well, I guess they don't have uh, cell phones yet. Tomoe put out a business card and wrote her home phone number on it. Then Natsumi wrote her phone number down, and the two of them exchanged papers. Oh my god. The classic one, man. Taking a no from a Wishi. Wishi used library, right? Maybe he didn't. I feel like he did. For an honor talk to she. That's his go to, I think. Tomoe responded, Sounds good to Natsumi's suggestion. Then Natsumi said thank you once again and bowed before running off to the pharmacy. After seeing her off with a smile, Tomoe turned and headed toward the main office. Chapter break. We'll do a little more. I'm planning to make this a short-ish episode. I know it's kind of fucking up the thing, but did start a little late, so. Oh, tips. Maybe you can make it into a 30-minute episode if you stall on enough. Smiley face. <laughs> Let's see what the tips is, though. Application denied? Who are we denying? Better not be an act to me. April 30th, 1982. To the director of the Golgara University Hospital. Oh, someone uh, applying to be in the hospital. The application for the manufacture and sale of the following drugs has been denied. One, nomenclature, product title, Placil B. I think this is what Natsumi was using. Selective psycho psychotransmitter reuptake inhibitor. Two active effect psychotrop psychotropic and antipanic anxiety effect. Three end result causes target to feel better and more motivated, primarily for the treatment of depression and panic disorders, but in addition to those, can be used to treat obsessive compulsory. Neurosis and eating disorders. By being transported to the brain through the bloodstream, it inhibits the reuptake of psychotransmitters within the signal transduction nerves, and it also increases the concentration of transmitters in the synaptic cleft, sy sy synaptic cleft on the brain. Wow. As a result, neurotransmission ability is improved, which reduces the user's mental burden and calms their mood. 4. Reason for rejection In the case of overdose, symptoms such as severe drowsiness, confusion, hallucinations, and, in some patients, self-inflicted harm were identified in late clinical trials. I guess 
this is like at the point where people don't know about Hinobisa syndrome. So reading this, they're like, "Ooh, is this what ta what's causing uh, the crazy shit happening in Hinobisa? Is someone giving them this sort of drug? Kind of like a red airing." Though I think I guess Natsumi was taking it. It's kind of a deadly combo combined with the syndrome. <laughs> Additionally, analysis of the active components is still difficult at the present time. Five, etc. If submitting another application, analysis of the components mentioned in item four and a description of the active effects will be required. Ministry of Health and Welfare, Pharmaceutical and Medical Safety Bureau. But we'll delve into the next chapter a little bit. Do do a little bit. Just to have a little more meat on this video. All right, let's see what's happening next. Tomoe's investigation at the Godra General Hospital went poorly as expected. No matter how much she explained the situation and the case at hand, they insisted that protection of personal information was their top priority. After all, there's no way to force the information out of them without a search warrant. That's fair for the hospital, to be honest. So, to Tomoe returned to Kikuchi the next day empty-handed. Oh? Kikuchi? Wait, we're in Kikuchi. Oh, we went all the way back, huh? Oh, Nadisa. Well, <laughs> sorry, but we didn't really get anywhere. <laughs> As Nadisa said that, she took a seat in front of Tomoe, who was waiting near the front of the store. This is the Chizuka Cafe, unless it's just a different one. But since they're in Kikuchi, it's possible. You can always tell, because it has a bunch of pictures of oranges. <laughs> Framed. Or not even pictures, paintings of oranges. Tomato. Not tomato. Tomato. Why am I thinking of... Oh, what's the ranch then? Mitten! Mittens! It just so happened that this girl's new address was on the outskirts of Kikuchi City. Huh. Be friends with Natsumi. Before long, a waitress came by and sat a menu and a glass of cold water in front of Nagisa. What's a lemon squash? Sorry, I think that's doodle worthy. Lemon squash. I've never heard of that. It's a soda. Lemon squash. Fill a bottle with sugar and pour lemon juice up to the top. Sun it for a few days? Excuse me? Shaking the bottle three, four times a day is till totally dissolved. Is this real? You sun it? Lemon squash are made with two ingredients, lemon juice and sugar. Nothing like homemade lemon squash should beat the summer heat. So I'm looking at recipes. Uh... So what do you do? You put... 600 grams of lemon juice to 200 grams of sugar. Put both ingredients in a pot and mix it with a wooden spoon. When it comes to a boil or the heat, let it simmer for 6 to 7 minutes. Remove any froth foaming with a splatted spoon. Remove from heat, allowing to cool syrup in a glass bottle in the refrigerator up to one year. Ah. Huh. You can make lemonade with lemon squash. So it's just, oh, it's kind of like cold brew. It's just like a thing. I guess you can drink pure, but you can mix it into other drinks. That's weird. <laughs> I've literally never heard. I'm kind of not even like, huh? 
And she's just she's just ordering this shit pure. Kind of a digi chat, honestly. So a lot of them, I don't know what the fucking the sunning thing was. That sounded crazy. I don't know why you sun it for a couple days. Most of the recipes say you boil it. And just like mix the shit. Anyway. <laughs> okay, weird. But cool. After Nagisa timidly asked that, Tomoe nodded to her and told the waitress her order. The one then once the waitress politely bowed and headed back to the kitchen, Tomoe turned back to Nagisa once again. I got nothing, but I still think someone killed him. Though they're yeah, they are actively working on it though, so. That's actually really good news, never mind. I was kind of being a hater, but I totally forgot the, they're officially actually starting the case, so. Nadisa held her glass of water in both hands while her eyes drooped to gaze at the undulating surface of the water. Her eyes remained sorrowfully fixated downward, but then she loosened her expression and sighed as if she was a little relieved. Even if Kohei's incident is reinvestigated as a murder case, even if they catch the culprit and she learns who to direct her hatred towards, he was never coming back. Tomoe can't do anything more than dig up the past. Then the waitress walked over and sat their orders in front of the two of them. Nadisa inserted her strong took a sip without stopping to say thank you for the food. Then she fell silent for a while, playing with the ice. Tomoe wasn't sure what to say to comfort her, so she put a hand on her cup. Just then, suddenly. Uh, she's hobbling in the, in the treasure trove. Tomoe suddenly turned away at a loss for how to respond. Najisa looked up in surprise, as though she sensed something in Tomoe's voice. Don't, don't confront her, man. It's kind of dangerous. After she may or may not have choked Tomoe out. No. Nagisa leaned her whole body forward as she asked that. Tomoe simply stared at Nagisa, regretting that she answered so carelessly. Tomoe didn't have any right to ask, but she couldn't help but continue. その感情をぶつけに行くというのなら私は教えたくない。怒りや憎しみにとらわれて復讐したくなる気持ちは理解できる。だけど復讐を果たした後のことを考えてもそう思える。あなたが想像する以上に苦しくて。This wasn't somebody else's business. 
She lived with the same hatred and resentment for the past 11 years, living her life while keeping it locked away. Thanks to that, she's fully understood the pain and emptiness that those emotions entailed. もう十一年だ。ユースクも十分に良くやったと君の。もうそろそろ自分の人生を取り戻してもいいんじゃないかね。これが私の今の両親が殺された事件を解決しない限り前には進めないんです。うん。君はそう思い込もうとしてもいい